So let's say that you have this theory on life that people who enjoy math more are somehow wired differently or um, somehow different from other people. And you think that this quality of, of thinking math is fun might be linked to some future outcome. Maybe that's um, more financial success, maybe it's less dating success, <laughs> maybe it's more dating success. Who knows what your theory might be? It, the point is, in order to test that theory statistically, you need to have a way of measuring uh, how much someone thinks that mathematics is fun. And they've done that here in the L's uh, with this, this question. The problem is they were not able to measure it uh, as a scale variable. It's, it's an ordinal variable, uh, which means that if they, they put a one, they strongly agree that they wouldn't want to give mathematics up because it's fun. Um, that is certainly a stronger answer than a two, which is a stronger answer than a three and a four. So we know which order these follow in. What we don't know is the, the gap between strongly agree and agree. Is that the same as the gap between agree and disagree, or the gap between disagree and strongly disagree. And, and that's a question, it's a very controversial question in statistics and research in general. Um, so mathematically, it's not okay to use an ordinal variable like this in a regression as it is. Uh, and, and so you will have many statisticians um, very opposed to using variables like this in a correlation in a regression. Uh, on the other hand, if you go to research articles in most fields, uh, you will see this all over the place being used freely. Um, and, and so most practitioners, people who are practicing or, or conducting research, uh, believe that this is okay to just assume that these gaps are roughly the same, enough that the, the results aren't going to be affected too much. And, and this is a serious battle. You'll get arguments on both sides. Um, there are some statistical ways that you can adjust that are accepted, uh, even by statisticians. For example, if we would go to conduct a regression and we select this thing called an ordinal regression, uh, this would be if the outcome variable we're looking at is on an ordinal scale, uh, this would allow us to do it uh, mathematically correct. So this one would not be debated. This one everyone would agree with. Uh, the question is whether you could run a normal regression and have some of your variables, say mother education, be one of the predictor variables uh, because this is on an ordinal scale. So for this assignment, uh, let's go ahead and, and do it like the practitioners. In other words, we're going to allow ordinal variables here in the in the independent variables. Uh, there is one little note I'll give you when you run the correlation. There is a, a type of test that you can just check and that will give you a legitimate statistical test for ordinal variables. For the regression, we'll just say you can go ahead and put it in because honestly I'm more important I'm more um, concerned with whether or not you can interpret the variables and what their meaning is in plain English uh, at this point and then the the thing to know is if you do that you should just put in a line that say uh, there is some limitation here in that I used an ordinal variable in the regression and this assumes uh, an equal interval between the responses or, or something. Just make sure that you mention that there is a limitation there and that you're aware of that limitation.